Alrighty guys, it is Thursday and this is the first time you're seeing my face. I apologize. I am having an issue with my phone. It's saying my memory is full again. So I didn't even get to upload Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, book club Thursday is today, but me and Charmaine, I, well, I also, uh, I'll explain in a second, but Charmaine messaged me and it kind of worked out. I swear we're always on the same, wave, same wavelength and she said she wasn't going to have her review ready for Thursday, that she would post it Sunday. So I had told, she's like, don't wait for me though. And I said, actually Sunday works out better for me anyway, because Wednesday, yesterday, Valentine's Day, all of my papers were due for my class. Uh, she had given me an extension on one of the papers because I, when I was sick and that paper was due and then my like final paper was due plus a lesson plan. So I have been busting my butt working on all of that. Um, Sunday is usually when I start the vlog. You guys know, well, I go, if you don't know, I do a bi-weekly lunch at my mom's house. So it was the week we go to her house. So I try not to film there. I just, you know, privacy for my parents and my brother and his girlfriend and the baby. So I, I didn't film. And then Monday, um, like I said, it was basically just work, got home from work, worked on homework all day. And then Tuesday was actually a snow day here. School was actually canceled, which really helped. I got so much work done. I don't think I would have met the deadline if it hadn't been for the snow day. So God worked in my favor or the universe, whatever you believe in. Uh, Tuesday, I, we, well, we had heard that there was gonna be snow. It was gonna start in the middle of the night, Monday. So before we even left work on Monday, we were notified that we were not gonna have work the following day. I was surprised they did it that early. I had a feeling they were gonna wait till like nighttime or the next morning, but no, they notified us really early. All the kids left in really good spirits because they knew they had a snow day. So I woke up Tuesday. Thank God Joe's work was canceled. Sometimes I get nervous because he does drive for work and sometimes big corporations do not give a shit and they will still try to make them work. There was a time I'll never forget there was a snowstorm and Joe went into work and they attempted to do deliveries because that's what he does and I think by like 10 or 11 they gave up they told him to just turn around and come back and it was like what was the point of that they could have been safely in their house instead of do, dealing with all that um I mean I get that they need to make money but they also need to think about people's lives but anyway so they had called him and told him he didn't have work either. And it would have been nice to have a cozy day at home. I was kind of jealous. One of the teachers that I talked to all the time or in a group chat, she was like, oh, I have such fun plans for tomorrow. She went to the grocery store like right after work. She was like, I'm going to make my own homemade bagels and I'm going to do um, breakfast sandwiches. And I was like, and she's like, I'm going to do a movie night with my husband, movie day actually. And I'm like, good for you. I'm going to be writing two papers. And that's literally what I did. Um, Joe was really helpful. He he uh, made me lunch, he made me dinner, and I literally was just on my laptop the entire day. Um, and I got everything done, thank God. And then yesterday, was Wednesday and it was Valentine's Day and that was a crazy day um, because me and Joe wanted to get to the restaurant ASAP because we tried to avoid crowds just like on Friday if you watch last week's vlog we only we it's we don't go out to eat every Friday we try to only go Fridays where he gets out early because with his job we never know he does delivery sometimes he's really late today he's probably gonna be really late he's in Nantucket and other days he's done really early so I had told him I said let's so we never like really make plans but i was like i have a valentine's day idea if you get out early that's basically what like the wavelength we were on and um he did get out early he told me like tuesday um he, what they called him told him where he was going to be the next day or someone walked in but anyway so they told him he only had three vons and they were very local so he's like oh we're, I'm, I lu we lucked out i think we're gonna i'm gonna have an early day blah blah so he was like <clears throat> Let's plan for Valentine's Day. So he did get out really early. He actually got out before me. I got out of work and he surprised me in the parking lot with one of my gifts on my car. Very romantic. I also woke up in the morning and there was a gift. Um, I did take pictures, so I'll insert it after this little chat so you guys know what you're seeing. Um, and then, so it was a very surprise filled day. I woke up to a surprise. I got out of work to a surprise. I got home at 3.20, I literally jumped straight in the shower, I did my hair, got dressed, and me and Joe were out the door. Oh, I did have to meet my teacher at 4.30 for a Zoom, through a Zoom. She just wanted to meet with us for like 15 minutes just to let us know like 
how our grade, like if we were missing any work, how our grades are so far, things like that, since it is like the like last week of the class. So um, at 430, I'd like stop what I was doing, got on Zoom with her 15 minutes, and then we left the house. It was like right after the Zoom, literally, because I was, my hair was done. And I was just in a robe talking to her. And then the second I got off the Zoom, I took off the robe, put on my dress, put on my shoes, and walked out the door. So we got to the restaurant for 5.15. And we definitely beat the crowd. I feel like most people work like a 9 to 5. So I it definitely picked up like after 6 because we were still there eating. So they were able to see us right away. We did a Valentine's Day special. I took a picture of the menu, so I'll include that as well. And it was like... um a shared appetizer and then we each got to pick either a soup or a salad two entrees and like a shareable dessert for 75 dollars and then of course i got a drink joe got a drink so the bill was about 100 bucks um and i thought that was gonna be it and then i got home and there was a valentine's day surprise for me again so again i will include all the photos i actually want to show you the items um i just could not film anything yesterday it was just like back to back to back craziness it was like work get ready get on zoom get to the restaurant um so when i get home i'll show you guys everything Alrighty, guys so you caught me this morning at work and i told you about the great valentine's day me and joe had and how he surprised me in the morning when i left work and surprised me at night so i'm going to show you the items the one i want to should probably go in order but <laughs> but the one i want to show you first because i want to eat it that's why <laughs> it's my little dessert after my dinner is the one he showed me at night um well when i you know it was like the last big hurrah of the night so i have to flip the camera so you guys can see this in all its glory here it is there is an ice cream shop by us it's like a thai rolled ice cream if you guys don't know what that is look it up it is so cool but they were doing this valentine's day special they've only been open for about two years they did it last year too it is on the expensive side like joe paid 80 bucks for this they make a killing that is for sure they even did like kid versions but they know what they're doing because they know that this is just so gimmicky and popular i think especially for like social media people that's not why joe got it for me but i think they a lot of their stuff like is just very like they're just really good at taking pictures and posting on social media, which I think a lot of businesses need to do nowadays. But anyway, it is six chocolate covered strawberries. So there's one, two, three. This one's kind of flipped over and that's what I'm dying to eat right now. Four, five, six. And as you can see, like this one has a little pink rose. One's just red, one's just white. One has sprinkles. This one's like half dipped in sprinkles. Then it has this cute little happy valentine's day there's a bunch of shreds uh it, i think he said it was regularly 75 but if you added a rose it was 80 there's also like hershey kisses so you guys can see some of the hershey kisses there's also like i don't know if there's no there's more than one there's like a bunch of chocolate covered pretzels there's one there's another one but this is a chocolate heart and it comes with the hammer to crack it so i'm not gonna do that because i already ate what was under here so basically once i saw it i already knew what it was because i saw it online and i was like oh my god that's so cool and joe listened he's a good listener and he got it for me and we got home from our valentine's day dinner and i was like okay so i walked in i saw this and inside of this the only reason i would have cracked it but i wanted to show it to you guys and you know it was nine at night i was dying to just eat my dessert and go to bed and um so i wanted to show it to you guys how it's supposed to be i thought instead of having like a weird cracked heart and it looking weird but basically i lifted this and it had ice cream so you guys can kind of see some of the melted pulled ice cream well there's more chocolate covered pretzels um and it is their Thai rolled ice cream that they are very known for. Um, so Joe ordered it in chocolate covered strawberry. So it was chocolate ice cream and it had little red flecks because they actually chopped up the strawberries and like mix it in. 
so so good um i, I don't know I, he, he got to pick the ice cream but i don't know if you could pick from the whole menu or if they had a few select like valentine day themed ones i'm not sure but this was the presentation absolutely gorgeous i'm gonna treat myself to some strawberries now and i will crack this eventually and eat the chocolate heart um when i do crack it i'll probably make it a little instagram reel or something like that but i am dying to dig into these strawberries right now for my little dessert last night was the ice cream sunday me and joe split it and now it is the strawberries but how how cute is this so it comes in like in this little box just so you guys can see like how it's presented super super adorable and then i think there was an option with 12 chocolate covered strawberries and that was like a hundred so they definitely make a killing because strawberries are not that expensive pretzels are not that expensive a whole bag of pretzels and probably made them like 20 orders because i only have like four pretzels you know what i mean and chocolate's not that expensive a single rose but you know it's the thought that counts and i really appreciate joe getting this for me but i think they kind of overcharge a little i think 50 would have been a little more reasonable but super cute super gimmicky and i love it i'm corny like that let me know what you guys think of this Alrighty, guys so you saw the surprise that joe used to end the night which was the chocolate heart with the chocolate covered strawberries and the chocolate covered pretzels and the hershey kisses all in that beautiful box so so cute um like I said, that should, I kind of did that out of order, but that's okay. So when I woke up on Valentine's Day, this was on the coffee table with a bouquet of roses. And I thought this was so, so cute. And basically, it is a bear made out of foam flowers so this is it right here how cute is that i definitely want to incorporate him on my bookshelves with my romance books i think that would be super super cute and then he actually came with accessories so it even says decorating accessories and you can like some of these are headbands that the bear can wear on his head some of these are things he can hold you can like put it on a stick so it comes with like these little toothpicks but how cute if you want to like dress him up for Valentine's Day. Kind of wish it came with like like a, a Santa hat, like like all the different seasons. Oh, there's like a chat bubble that's super cute. Bouquet of flowers, XOXO. Oh, it's double sided too. Pink on one side, black on the other. I love you. Oh, and then this love, red on one side, pink on the other. This I thought this was so, so cute. And Joe knows I love little things like this to put on my bookshelves. And the little bow says just for you. Super adorable. Waking up to this a dozen roses. Went to work. And then, like I said, when I got out of work, he got out before me. His car was parked on the side of me. He surprised me. And on my car was this. This was a special Barnes & Noble was doing. It was a mystery blind date with a book. And they said it was for Galentine's. And you had to fill out a survey. So if you guys watch... Actually, I don't think it's up yet. I think it's going to be up the Monday after you watch this vlog. I am going to post the Barnes & Noble haul. And I'm going to show you guys everything I got at Barnes & Noble's. So that day, I couldn't pick up the book. Because this is like a Valentine's Day special. You had to pick it up on Valentine's Day. So Joe picked it up for me and paid for it. Because you couldn't pay for it till after basically because you don't know what book you're gonna get so they don't know what to charge you i filled this out that day and turned it in and then it gave them a few days i think i did this on like the 10th or 11th it gave them a few days to pick out the book and um for joe to pick it up and you know decorate it because they had to decorate it as well and give little goodies for joe to pick it up on valentine's day so i'm gonna read you guys the questions and my answers and then there's actually a bunch of post-it notes so this must have been workers from barnes and nobles making suggestions so i'm curious to see if one of these suggestions is what's wrapped so it was a personalized recommendation questionnaire and the first question is favorite books of all time. So I put, and there's going to be a um, surprise to you guys because you know, guys, I've mentioned these books before. To be honest, I didn't put uh, my favorite um, series, which is um, I Love the Good Girls Guide to Murder and I Love One of Us is Lying, One of Us is Next, all that. Because I was leaning more towards getting like a romance book versus like a thriller so for my romance books i put the seven husbands of evelyn hugo love hypothesis the love hypothesis is definitely one of my favorite romance i had it right here on this table but i think joe put it away 
And it's, I like it too because I find it very well rounded. There's only one smut scene in it. Not that I'm against smut, but sometimes when a book is all smut, I don't get into it. I think the smut scene was done very well. It's a good example of a smut scene done very well. For, it's like if you want to dip your toes into smut, try it out. Love Hypothesis is good for that. And it was good representation because it's a woman in STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. And I absolutely love that. And I also put Fourth Wing because even though Fourth Wing is fantasy, there's definitely a romance angle to Fourth Wing. And I think that's why I liked Fourth Wing. I I do like fantasy if there's some romance dipped in there. And then for books you've hated, so I wouldn't necessarily say I hated these books, but I would say I disliked them. I think at the moment, I was like, okay with them. But then as time goes on, I was like, wow, those books really weren't that good, in my opinion. Because I know, so these are actually books we've read for a book club, and I know Charmaine really enjoyed them. And some of you guys might have read them. And that was The Silent Patient and The Guest List. The Guest List I really, really struggled to get into. If I remember correctly, I believe I texted Charmaine that. Um, I was even like, oh, I might not be done in time for the video. But I did get done in time. I will say, though, I did listen to it audio. So it might be different reading it as a physical book. I love audio books. But I find for a book that has a lot of detail, which the guest list did, the island was like its own character. She went a lot into like the island and the ocean and uh, there was uh, some twists and some turns. I think for books like that, physical is the best way to go. Because with audio, sometimes it's easy to like kind of, uh, what's the word, tune out? I don't know if tune out's the right word, but it's easy to just get like distracted. Um, I find the romance books I'm reading right now, Audio is like perfect. They don't require a lot of thought, but I find when it's like a thriller or something like that, you're better, better off of reading it. So that might be because it was audiobook. If I read it again in book form, I might like it. But I actually know some people who were not a fan of the guest list. Um, they said, cause I think the Paris apartment was another one by the same author. Um, the, the, the author is not coming to me. It's like Lucy something, I think. Um, no, it might not even be Lucy. I don't know, it really is coming to me right now. But some people were like, oh, I didn't like the guest list, but I love the Paris apartment. Or some people were like, if you didn't like the guest list, don't bother with the Paris apartment. It's the same style. So I don't know. The Silent Patient, I liked the book. But like, when I see so many people hype it up, I see it all over Bookstagram, or even now, years later, I don't see the, I think there's so many other better psychological thrillers out there that I think the Silent Patient was a letdown for me. And I think that's because it was so hyped up. The book itself isn't bad. If I, I think if it hadn't been so hyped up, I would have enjoyed it. But because people were like pff, putting it on a pedestal saying it was a 10, it made me expect so much more, if that makes sense. So I put those down as books I hated. And then favorite books or TV show. So I put a bunch here. I put A Walk to Remember. It's one of my favorite Nicholas Sparks movies. I put Friends, Gilmore Girls, Golden Girls. Those are like my three classic older tv shows that i love and then newer tv shows that they're newer but they just went off the air is this is us and a million little things i loved those i love mandy moore i love milo ventimiglia oh my and million little things was incredible i never cried so much for a show but those just both ended recently i believe they're on hulu and netflix if you guys haven't seen them i want to check them out and for my other favorite movie i put the wedding planner um that false proximity you know that's why i love romance um and then it says please list your favorite genres so i put some fantasy if romance is mixed in and contemporary romance so that's definitely my favorite and then i put and then it says do you like book talk recommendations and i put yes for sure i said my favorites are emily henry christina lauren uh colleen hoover and ali hazelwood and then fave tropes or elements in a book. I put like all the romance, not all the romance tropes, because definitely some I'm not a huge fan of. But I put small town, second chance. I love fake dating. I love friends to lovers. Some fantasy. I put some fantasy if romance is mixed in and vampire romance. Um, I'm dipping my toes into that. I bought a book recently. You guys have seen the Barnes and Noble haul. But it definitely like, you know, I, I loved Vampire Diaries. I loved Twilight. So I want to get back into my vampire romance. And then it says the first place you go to when you walk into Barnes and Noble. And I literally put the book talk section because I literally have a whole section on what's popular on book talk or bookstagram. And then contemporary romance because that is truly my favorite. And then there's a little column here. A little table, I should say, where you fill it out. And it says, 
I would like to be given trigger warnings. And then you have between strongly agree and strongly disagree. And in the middle is agree, disagree, and neutral. So I put agree. It's not something I strongly like, yes, I need trigger warnings. But I would like some trigger warnings, you know, depending on the what's in the book, you know. One thing, like, I hate reading about incest. And I know, is it Credence? I know people who love smut love Credence. I think that's the one. Um, and it has something to do with, like, her uncle or her cousins. I don't know. I, I just, I can't. Nope. And anyway, then the next one is, I am only interested in adult books. I put neutral because I'm totally fine with um, young adult uh, romances as well, YA. And then the last one is, I like dual point of view or multiple point of views. And I put agree. I love dual point of views. I actually just finished a book literally early this morning a not so meet cute by megan quinn it goes one chapter her one chapter him one chapter her one chapter him and i loved it i love dual point of view so i put agree i don't necessarily like need to have a book with dual point of views but i do enjoy it and then so a few more questions and it said tick the box that corresponds to your preferred option so it says which format do you typically prefer and it was hardback paperback mass market and ebook i do have a kindle i don't necessarily gravitate towards it um i think because it's older and it's really laggy this is actually a kindle fire which i don't even think they sell anymore i keep saying one day i would like to treat myself to a paper white but i feel like if i'm not using it that much is it really worth the paper white clearly i have a thing for physical books i don't know maybe one day if it's like gifted to me it's not something i'm necessarily budgeting for um so i just don't gravitate towards ebooks i did read odd thomas on here because it's only like 99 cents ebook so i will it's just not my preference so i put paperback and hardback and then um it said which page count bracket do you prefer and you can feel fairly blank i left the blank because i didn't want to limit it by choosing one of these um i do prefer books that are like i would say like the second choice so the first choice is 100 to 250 if it's at the 250 mark i'm good i think like 100 something is a little too short it's not enough build up for me so 250 to 350 i would say is my sweet spot which is the second one the third one is 350 to 450 and then 450 plus but i didn't want to limit myself because i love fourth wing and fourth wing is more than 450 pages also this book is over 400 pages and i loved actually like literally just over i think it's like 400 me see because it's not obviously it's not huge it's not super thick it's 408 um so i didn't want to limit my um options with that so i just left it blank and then the price bracket they had 17 to 30 fill in the blank so you can put your but your own budget there is no limit throw in a bookmark and under 10 which said for kids because there's not a lot of books you can get for like adults under 10 bucks at barnes and nobles so i put the 17 to 30 bracket i didn't want to spend too much and i also put throw in a bookmark if possible and then one of the other questions says, what would you like us to know? Do you hate stickers on books? Do you enjoy shorter chapters, etc.? We want to know all your secrets. And I did pull, I prefer shorter chapters, which is the truth, but it's not a deal breaker. And then in the back, it said, can we keep in touch? And then you could put your Goodreads, your story graph, or your social media. So I actually put my Instagram page where I talk a lot about books and plus size fashion, other things you got. I do behind the scenes for YouTube. If you guys are interested, it's linked down below. It's Taylor Marie's underscore journey. And then I actually mentioned this YouTube channel and i put taylor murray um and i just said thank you we're excited to be your matchmakers and then the three index little index oh my god post his notes i'm hoping it's not this one only because i already own it but the rest i do not own so one of them is forget me not um i can i can see the cover in my head but i don't know if i'm thinking of the actual right book it's like a jar right with like hearts inside of it I'm not 100% sure if I'm wrong, or right or wrong about that. The other one was second chance. I can't read that last word. Second chance. This word right here. I have no idea what that says. Blur bed by Allie Hazelwood. And it says, and it's dual point of view. I love Allie Hazelwood, so I wouldn't mind. Buy a thread by Lucy Score. That is the book I am almost certain I have because I have a Lucy Score section on my bookshelf. And then there was Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren, but somebody X'd it out. So I don't know if that means that's what I got, which if I did that, I wouldn't be bad because it's on my wish list and I don't own it. And then The Simple Wild, which I feel like I've seen the cover of that as well. So this is what I got. 
So Joe went in and paid for it for me. So there was a sticker on the back that said $16.99. And I believe that is what he paid plus tax. They threw in a bookmark. They threw in a little lollipop. So um, it says, you're my love. Love pops. And it's a heart. This is the bookmark. It's super cute. It says it's $5.99. So for Joe to pay $16.99... And it's the book and the bookmark. Not bad. He might have paid more. Actually, now that I think about it, I think he said he paid close to 30 Joe, this is the bookmark. Wow. How much did you pay for the blind date with the book from Barnes & Noble? It is a very, very, very thick cardboard. Do you remember? How much did you pay for this blind date with the book? Because the book says $16.99, but then the bookmark says $5.99. 24. 24 25, maybe 28. Then it came with this really, really cute envelope that has a wax stamp. So let's open this and see what's in here. I am very curious. And the heart stamp is a cute little heart. I mean, the heart stamp. The wax stamp is a heart. That is so cute. So let's open this up. I wonder if it's like a little note from them. Hi, Taylor. We chose your applying date because it's a second chance contemporary romance with dual point of view. It's also blurbed on the cover. Oh, is that what they mean? Second chance blurbed by Allie Hazelwood. It's also blurbed on the cover by Allie Hazelwood. And we know you love those books. Here are some other wrecks. So it says right here, The Simple Wild. We think you would like this if you like Colleen Hoover and Christina Lauren. Pretend your mind. Fake dating, small town, contemporary romance. Thank you so much for trusting us to choose your blind date. We hope you love at least one of these. Let us know how we did. Love the Barnes & Noble staff. That is really cute. So this is how I got it. So it says Second Chance, Dual Point of View, Rom-Com. And again, a bunch of cute wax seals, a bunch of cute little gems. Um, I haven't talked about wanting to start a book journal. I actually just organized my craft cart. I'm super excited about. So I might try to hold on to some of these. See if I can salvage them. Like, I would totally love this. And I love that it's like 3D and pops out. Let's unwrap the book. You ready? So I'm going to unwrap it this way so you guys even see it before I do. It, it, oh yes okay so it is not the book i was thinking of but i have seen this so it was one of the ones on the post-it note and my girl you guys know i talk about it a lot Brittany from gg and Bo, posted about this book and if i remember correctly she really really enjoyed it and loved it and it is blurbed right here by ali hazelwood it says julie soto is my favorite writer period i will read anything she writes and love every second of it and i've never read any of her books i love the illustration super curious to try out a new author makes me super duper happy um yeah i am really excited to get into this i'm on vacation soon so let's see if i can get it done but um it said oh and it, it says a wedding planner because i know i love the wedding planner emma Torres is a wedding planner who doesn't believe in marriage but weddings they're amazing elliot bloom is a brooding florist who hates owning a floral shop until a certain bright-eyed donut loving workaholic shows up at his door once upon a time they collaborated on events by day and by night Ama Tra Ama A M A yeah Trace the intricate flower tattoos etched along his body. Then Ama shattered his heart and never spoke to Elliot again. Now they're working on an event that could make or break both of their careers. Except neither of them has gotten over what happened two years ago. Things are not helped by the two brides who see the obvious chemistry between Ama and Elliot and are determined to set them up, not knowing their complicated history. But as the wedding takes on a life of its own, Ama and Elliot are about to discover that some things can survive a complete catastrophe. Smart, hilarious, forget-me-not is about two people giving themselves and love a second chance. Yes. And it's dual point of view. So I am going to absolutely love this they picked well and it's not one i already have so it makes me really happy that was one thing i was like a little nervous about but i figured worse comes to worse I throw it in a giveaway or something i really wanted to partake in this so thank you joe i don't think you heard me <laughs> but yeah that is everything i got on valentine's day i'm gonna end the vlog there um i am on vacation next week so when you guys watch next week's vlog there's gonna be i think a lot of 
good footage. I have plans to go bridal dress shopping with a friend on Monday and doing lunch. I have breakfast plans with my mom one day. Joe took the Friday and the following Monday off. We're going to try to get some cleaning done, some organization done. So um, hang on tight for next week. I think it's going to be a good one. The sun is finally shining. Your girl is in a in good spirits. And uh, Barnes and Nobles, if you're watching, you did an amazing job. Um, Hope you guys are enjoying the vlogs. You know, guys know they're every single Friday. I do vlogs, plus size fashion, unboxings, hauls, book club, um, you know, lifestyle things, things that bring me joy. The Instagram will be linked down below. Also, I am now a Gigi and Bo influencer, which means I have a code for you guys. So if you guys love stunning bookmarks, in my opinion, her bookmarks are better than the one I just got from Barnes & Noble. And the same price, if not cheaper. If you don't get laminated, her bookmarks are five bucks. If you get laminated, they're six. This was six. And it's not even laminated. It's nice and thick. Like, I'm not complaining. But this bow's so short. She has like nice long tassels. You can get no tassel, tassel, laminated, not laminated. And she has gorgeous, gorgeous designs that she hand draws herself. She has the classics like Gilmore Girls. Like I just read for you guys. She has... The Office, Harry Styles, Taylor Swift. But she does have everyday designs, fruits and floral and all that stuff if you're into it. Uh, this is a good example of one of hers. I love this one. I'm going to put it in the book I am reading, you know, for Valentine's, which was the one I just finished, the, the Megan Quinn one right here. Um, and then this is another one. Busy doing hot girl shit. I love this one. So use my code Tay10 if you're interested. I will be linking her down below. She is an amazing bookmark shop to support. I absolutely love her incredible designs, the color choices that she uses. She is so smart, so kind. You guys know I love supporting small businesses, and she's a great one to support because she's an amazing human being. Um, I will end it there. Check out all the links down below, and be safe, guys.